games are just so sick. It's going to be uh, two teams that I can't spoil because Kix has an overlay for that. So I'll let you go ahead and take it away, Kix. Yep, so if we have a quick look. First of all, I just want to have a look at the current standings just to see how things are going as we head into week five. Well, in the middle of week five, we've only got one week, no, two weeks left after this of this round. So let's head on over there and let's take a look at what's going on. So currently at the top of Group A, we do have Red, closely followed by White Clan. Uh, now DM is close behind them as well, very, very close to qualifying yet again for the playoffs. Of course, White did win the playoffs in Round 1, uh, DM did come fourth. Uh, but Red doing very, very well this season, currently a 3-0. And at the top of Group B, uh, we can talk about this a little bit more later, but we've got Net Wars followed by Soul Gaming. So... The reason why I wanted to mention Red was not only are they at the top of the ranking table for the teams, they also hold two of the top spots for the player ranking as well. They've got Ku and Cryok up there with the best, or two of the best, uh, trying to think of the right word, best, <laughs> oh man, it's gone completely out of my head, Be best records I guess for round two. And uh, they're in the ahead, but well, they're only the, uh, losing out to Yeti and Defiler, who have actually played more games than them. So uh, this will be their chance today, because as we have a look at what teams we've got today, you'll soon see why I've gone with the red theme, as we will have Media versus Red. That's right, Media versus Red, uh, two very storied teams, I would say Media. Uh, has been around for a long time. It's coming back. I'm excited to see who's playing this week. Uh, I don't know exactly. I've seen the lineup, but you know there could always have been some subs. Uh, I was around during the time that these games were being played and uh, got some super secret uh, insight that maybe I'll get a chance to share later on. But uh, you know, it it feels kind of weird looking at the names that are on media uh, and expecting them not to win all the time. But of course, this is current era of Brood War, not the previous one. And in the current era, Red are just killing it. Specifically, yeah. Cryok is outstanding so far. I can't wait to see how they do against each other. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Now, of course, looking at the previous stats, Me uh, Media didn't actually play in round one. They were debuted in round two. Uh, but they're currently sat at a one for two win ratio. Uh, so if they do want to make it to the playoffs, they're going to have to at least win today, as well as the rest of their games, I think, by the way that Red and uh, White Clan are doing. Uh, but of course, Red, if they win this, they are going to secure their top at the, or their place at the top of the group. And the only way they'll be unseated is if they do get beaten, obviously, in the next couple of weeks. But let's have a look at what maps we're going to be seeing today. So set one is going to be on Troy. Set two, Triathlon. Set three, New Sniper Ridge. Set four, Hitchhiker. And set five, Neo Electric Circuit. And uh, Reed, if you want to just quickly announce what the game's going to be, since you've got the thread open. Oh, uh, what the game is going to be. Yeah, sure. So uh, our, you mean our players, right? Yeah, the so players. So our players are going to be uh, media, our teams are media versus red. Our games are going to be future versus fisheye, uh, G5 versus Cadenzi, machine versus cryok, and then Nyokin versus last. And... This is actually so sick. So uh, Future used to be a very, very strong Protoss player back in the day. He went under my radar, and I didn't actually find out about him until he for, until he recently started playing again. But he streams all the time. He's very high MMR, and so I'm expecting uh, good things from him. Uh, G5, of course, a legend from back in the day, along with Machine and Nyokin. Yeah. Um, and uh, excited to see how these guys do up against some of kind of the monsters of STPL so far. Yeah, so obviously for Red, you've got Fisheye, uh, Cadenti, who's obviously now a Korean celebrity, so pretty big deal for Red to have her on their team. Cryok as well, and Last. Now, Last isn't the pro gamer Last, but he does have the same nickname, and he is Close Korean enough, as well. You know, so... he, he's pretty good, so yeah. let's not sleep on that. He is actually doing very, very well, which makes it almost even more exciting to watch. Yep, now let's quickly introduce a little bit about our first two players. Okay, so uh, you did mention this a little bit before, but uh, for media starting us off, we do have Future. Uh, now, Future does stream his ladder sessions a lot. 
He's currently two for one in the league, and he's been doing a pretty damn good job. Uh, currently sat pretty pretty high up the table, player table. The rankings don't seem to be displaying properly, but either way, I'll fix that afterwards. And his opponent going to be fighting for red. Not the fisheye that some people may remember, but fisheye nonetheless. He's not doing as well this season, or this round even, I'm doing what you do. Uh, he's actually three, oh, 3 down to 0 of course, so 3 losses, 0 wins. But last round he did go 3 for 2 and he does have some games here to pull himself back up the table again in round 2. Now of course, uh, this is going to be the first time these two players are going to meet, it's going to be a PvP. And it's going to be on Troy. Now, uh, I know we've got a lot to talk about on this map, but we'll do it when we get into the game. Four players, 12, 6, 3, and 9 o'clock position gas expansions. All of the bases can actually be locked onto an island, and the island base as well, next to the main, so with gas. So lots of gas to be taken on this map. Lots of uh, places you can abuse with shuttles as well. Uh, this is a PvP, so anything could happen. And let's have a look as we move on to the game, and let's see how this is going to go as we move on to our first game of today. And speaking of the game, starting us off here in the 10 o'clock position, we do have the green Protoss fighting for media, it's future. And his opponent in the purple on the bottom left hand side, this is Fisheye. And uh, yeah, it is a PvP. Uh, we saw one interesting <laughs> game. That's that this, uh, Yeah, PvP on this uh, a couple nights ago, yeah. where a uh, Protoss player did a two gate, used Zealots to kill the assimilators outside the other Protoss's main, and he GG'd instantly in less yeah. than, I think, three minutes or something. It's, it, it was yeah, insane. It was, uh, it was a crazy I, game. <laughs> I don't know if that's necessarily the right reaction or if we're going to see that again, but you are right when you said, Kix, that truly anything can happen. Yeah, especially in team leagues as well. I mean, if anyone used to watch the old Pro League, I know you did, and I know a lot of the people here probably did as well. The amount of crazy, crazy games in Pro League just... It just completely outnumbers anything you could ever see in an individual league. Like, it's just the nature of the tournament and everything as well. You've got more chances for your team to come back. You have people sending out people to snipe certain players and stuff like that. So, we'll have to see, uh... We'll have to see if that happens here. Uh, yeah. So, anytime you look at Protoss openings, you always want to see how early they take their gases, how many gateways, I guess step number one is how many gateways are there. Step number two is the gas timing. Uh, and step number three is whether or not they scout each other first. That can also uh, kind of change things around on four player maps. And this is not uh, cross spawns, so it's maybe a little bit closer. I think maybe that adds like seven, or takes like seven seconds off the rush time, but uh, it's not really all that consequential. Although it is a faster scout from Fisheye, but yeah. I mean, both players are going to know pretty much exactly where each other are. Yeah, and we're going to see a bit of a divergence in the builds. We're going to see what we saw the other day. One player choosing to go for two gateways. Uh, that is Fisheye, of course. Future going for the quicker gas. Now, we can we have seen that that can look very funky, but are we going to see fi um, Fisheye make this? Sorry. Are we going to see Future make the same decision that Narsil made the other day to not build that extra gateway? Or as he scouts here, is he going to add that gateway on? Yeah, uh, keep in mind, it's only two probes in gas right now. I think third probe um, may be added, but I think that's really all you need. This is just basically standard from future. Oh, Fish mana, is mana pylon. <laughs> Wait, no way. Oh my god. <laughs> no way. All right, well, uh, Fisheye. Uh, crucially enough, this mana pylon did not actually block in any probes. So while it will be a little bit harder to mine from that mineral patch, it doesn't actually deny a lot of mining. And uh, Future's with, done uh, something Captain really probes. cool here. He's actually built a, probe, a pylon behind the mineral lane to force his probes to stay in one place rather than running the whole way around. So that's yeah. a really clever solution to that problem. Now we do actually see Future adding on that second gateway as well, of course. It's going to be a lot delayed. We have the Zealots running across the map already. One of them already yeah. hitting the Assimilator. Uh, but Future is going to be able to scout this, which, which may save him. 
And this is exa almost exactly what we saw yesterday. One Protoss going more standardly after getting Mana Pylon. Oh, a second Mana Pylon going down. And then the uh, his opponent actually going for two gate and locking him into the base by taking out these assimilators. Now, we were discussing this kicks and I don't know exactly how bad this is to be locked in your base against the two gate opener. Like, sure, it's yeah. harder to take your natural, but you can just tech up to, you know, shuttles Shuttle, with reaper an drops island. and yeah, there's also island bases to take, so I don't know if it's really that bad, but it certainly seems to be popular, that's for sure. Yeah, it's certainly something we've seen a lot. Now, just in case you haven't seen this map before, the way it works is if one of the assimilators goes down, uh, the only units that can pass through are going to be those zealots and probes as well. And if both of the assimilators get taken down, that is when you start to see trouble. The only units that can make their way through the two Vespine guys is going to be a ghost which we won't see in this game. Now we do see a nice bit of Dragoon Micro here from Future just trying to deal with these zealots. And we're not going to see Fisher. I completely block him in. This is actually so sick. This Dragoon control is insane. Killing off all those uh, zealots and now taking out the pylons. I mean, this is just great. Now, the downside, of course, is a much later Nexus from Future, but he does completely hold off this four ga or two gate, and he should be able to even push these next four Zealots back away. Um, but, of course, getting out of his base is going to be more difficult now that one of those simulators yeah. has been killed. His Dragoons can't get through the gap, of course. Now, it almost feels like it'd be beneficial just to kill his own assimilator and just use shuttles to get around. Like, he's already adding on that robo. As you did say, that would be very likely he would do. And he is just kind of sitting back and defending now. Uh, Fisheye's tech going to be a little bit later. He is only now just getting his cybernetic score, so there's going to be no uh, Dragoons or anything from him for a while. And when the shuttle comes in, we could see some very, very interesting play from both of these players here. As we do see the, the OBS coming up, actually, rather than a support bay. Yeah, uh, I honestly, the biggest reason that you go OBS here is just to make sure that the follow-up to the two gate isn't uh, DT tech. Because if it is, and you're playing against anybody that would two gate you, would also DT rush you. Um, That's a good point. But I, yeah, I, I actually would have loved to see just straight into uh, support bay get a ton of uh or get a get a reaver and a shuttle and head across the map but maybe even the better idea would just be to go heavy gateway he's not doing either one of those things so i this is a pretty middle of the road and you know bases extra bases are kind of at a super high premium in pvp and to be this far behind on your expansion you've got to find a way to get back in the game yeah, now it looks like he's going to use his shuttle to try and ferry his Dragoons out. Now, of course, that is going to be a little bit harder for Fisheye to really deal with once all these Dragoons come towards him. Actually dropping in the Fog of War as well. Perfect place. Uh, Fisheye does not know this is going on, but he really should look at taking that island base as soon as he can. Uh, just to make so sure he can try and do some damage and try and get some economy up as well. Yeah, so he's going to send the Observer across, but he's going to ferry these four Dragoons over and maybe even go for six and then kill all four of these Zealots. That's a Nexus right there, so taking yeah. them down would actually be huge. Um, so good Micro, and he's even going to be used to be able to get a couple of shots from the Dragoons behind there. But either way, this completely opens up his natural. He will be able to get a probe through those Assimilators, uh, but more importantly, he is going to ferry out a lot of Dragoons out on the map. There's just not a lot of units for Fisheye. Yeah, Fisheye is going to be relying on these cannons he did at that forge a little bit earlier. And so, of course, he is going to be able to go into his plus one upgrade a lot quicker as well. But Fisheye a little bit worried about DTs. He's built a cannon in both of his mineral lines. Uh, but he's going to have to worry about what's coming in his front. And it looks like this is going to come down to Micro here. High ground advantage is a big, big deal here, and already losing some Dragoons. I don't know if this is the best place to fight. I mean, uh, sure, Future might have a momentary Dragoon advantage, but he's just going to try to hammer his way through the high ground. He's back up on top of it, but there's double cannons here and a Zealot. This is uh, really a rough attack here, so Future loses a bunch of Dragoons, can't break the high ground. The cannons warp in, and Fisheye holds on a much faster expansion. Future hasn't even gone for one yet. Yeah, Future is pretty far behind at this point. Now, he did get a decent trade with his units, didn't actually lose all that much compared to how much he killed. He even got one of those cannons. Uh, but he is going to need to make sure he expands fairly soon, and that's exactly what he's going to do here. Now, uh, back at home, is Fisheye going for any tech himself? It looks like he's adding on another cannon. 
And now the one thing that uh, Fisheye is going to worry about soon is not only does he have no detection minus these cannons, cannons can't outrange Reavers, and there is going to be a Reaver heading straight for him very, very shortly. Yeah, absolutely. The support bay has come down, and so we are going to see a Reaver from future. Uh, Reavers do very well against cannons or any sort of like defensive posture. Uh, the only problem is that, you know, the, the resources disadvantage is really going to kick in here pretty soon. And so if you just, you, you can't really tell from like the supply count, um, but the, the army for Fisheye is actually super, super scary when you consider that it has the high ground and cannon support. So this is uh, a very entrenched position that it's going to be difficult for future to assault. Yeah, now the funny thing is we actually have Fisheye immediate, well, skipping uh, Robo entirely. He's going straight into the Citadel. And now Citadel obviously very good. You can actually catch your opponent off guard with late DTs if you so choose to. Of course, Storm, very good in this matchup too. And now the one problem that Future may have is he doesn't actually have that much map vision, so he could fly uh, this Reaver over eventually into some kind of uh, pylon or something, which will tip off Fisheye, but Fisheye is just so defensively postured right now, it's actually going to be very difficult to do any damage to him. Yeah, I mean, barring every probe exploding, you know, that's always one way to get back into the game. Uh, Fisheye uh, really, really had a... Uh, uh, a good start to this game with the aggressive two gate and I, I feel like more than that futures reaction uh, was not actually uh, incredibly strong uh, he's going to continue to ferry all of his units over with some I guess relatively micro intensive shuttle control but but how do you deal damage at this point you've got the smaller army your reavers are not going to be able to deal with your opponent's reavers uh, if that is the tech he doesn't actually know right now yeah um and so, uh, of course, it is going to be legs coming up as well, and that really keeps these, uh, it really makes the Dragoons a whole lot less effective because they'll have to count, or kite rather, uh, against the big army of zealots on the ground. Oh, that's a nice bit of Reaver micro, though. Yeah, the Reavers are actually doing a lot of damage, so that's actually one way to really make this count. Uh, and of course, Scarabs do not have missed chance, so they are really going to have uh, a good time uh, yep. assaulting this. And two Reavers, I mean, this is a lot of damage. The Zealots are going to evaporate under the Scarab and Dragoon fire, and that means these Reavers just keep crawling up towards this natural. Oh, but here comes the DTs. There's no Observer up here, but a Scarab. Oh, yes, he there is. He does have an Observer. And the Scarab yeah, killed it observer. immediately. Yeah, wow, I completely missed that Observer, but that's a great move by him. And it looks like oh, he's the... going to break the natural somehow. And he is doing a great, <laughs> great job here. Zealots being rallied down from his gateways. Keeping his Reavers alive this entire time, Future is doing an incredible job. Dude, Future's Reaver control, like, okay, this guy's legit. Uh, and a maybe a little bit of disrespect here from Fisheye. Now, you really do need to move the Reavers forward and keep utilizing that advantage. Mm, there it is, the money shot right on those two Dragoons. They go down instantly, Future crushing through here uh, into the natural. Now, here is the irony. We could actually see Future knocking Fisheye down onto one base. Now, he is uh, bugging out a lot of the Scarabs on the Assimilator, so not going to be doing too much, but it looks like he's going to be able to take down the Nexus, and Fisheye is going to find himself locked on one base if he does so choose to kill these Assimilators, so this could be a big, uh, big deal. Yeah, so unfortunately, Future only has one shuttle. He needs a second shuttle to uh, ferry his units out of his base. He's building gateway units, but they can't actually come join this fight for reinforcements, oh, okay. uh, unless they're zealots. Now, is he going to save the... the shuttle, killing a Reaver, but oh, I think he might have been he... out. Oh, man, Sarah he's going to save one. the... Oh, he doesn't save the Nexus. It was so close, oh, but he just doesn't sick. manage it. Yeah, just the last couple of shots there, killing off the Nexus. I, I think... Probably Future should have just pieced the scene with that Shuttle Reaver combo, but then he might not have killed the Nexus. So either way, this is a big swing for Future. He has a base now, Fisheye does not. But the problem is that Fisheye has a gigantic army, yeah. uh, and there's only just now a couple of cannons coming up for Future. Yeah, because there's four, five, six, seven gateways already here for Fisheye. That econom uh, economy advantage obviously kicking in a lot sooner. Future only on four gateways, some of his units are actually still stuck behind. Has, and this could no be a shuttle. huge, huge counter push. He can't get Dragoons out of his main base, and he can't even build them very much, so... Oh, uh, the probes have been pulled as well. 
you've got to pull all the probes, my man. Probes are your only way to hold this. The Dragoons are actually running up and not microing all that much against the probes, so they are starting to actually deal quite a bit of damage to these Dragoons. Now, obviously, you don't want to lose the probes, and as the Zealots evaporate, the probes become much less effective. But, uh, I mean, here comes the shuttle, so he will be able to actually start ferrying his Dragoons out. Uh, but his Dragoons actually miss pathing and running back through his base, so bad Dragoon. He's not able to actually uh, save it. Or oh, great bring it block out. by Future, though, on these back uh, Dragoons, stopping them running back. But it looks like he's just run out of units. I mean, he's done a great <laughs> job. This is probably one of the most back and forth games I've ever casted. But it looks like Future is going to break the natural. GG! And Fisheye takes down Future in an incredibly tense PvP. Man, if Future had just pulled back his shuttle with two Reavers instead of leaving it there to try to kill that Nexus, even if you don't kill the Nexus, you've done a ton of damage and losing that shuttle Reaver, imagine he has not only the shuttle, the fairy units back at home, but also uh, the, uh, the Reavers on the high ground. Like, that's just almost game over if you want to try to break that so um instead he loses all of that loses to the counter push and i don't want to call that a throw because it was a very back and forth game yeah. but you know still uh, really incredible to see both players show strengths in their most dire moments yeah that was a very very dangerous situation for both players to really be in it almost feels like losing the Reavers was really the nail in the coffin for Future there, unfortunately. He just didn't have the units back home to try and defend. He traded a lot of units into the Nexus, uh, but unfortunately the Nexus wasn't really the powerful play there by, uh, by Fisher. It was the gateway count, and the fact he didn't lock him in the uh, base with the Reavers first really did cost him there. Uh, but still, a great game either way. That was really well played by both of them. Yeah, for Future, I thought he was actually pretty dead when he uh, didn't actually, you know, push out very quickly. He built OBS instead of just rushing Reavers, and um, it looked maybe like it may be a little bit uh, rough, but at, he the Reaver control was just super, super sick. So he, he got himself way back in that game, actually got a lead, and then kind of lost that and lost the game. So that puts Red 1-0 up in the series as we head on to game number two. It does, and as we get ready for that, I'm just going to quickly bring up the 